Hello everyone, this is Miss Ochoa here with another story for you. Um, I'm here at my family's farm. Um, so you can see behind me, um, spending some time outside, getting some fresh air, kind of away from the city. Um, I might do a video later of a little uh, a walk through the field and see what we can observe. Um, but right now I'm here with a story. I am going to read Sofia Valdez, Future Prez. Um, and this is by Andrea Beatty, illustrated by David Roberts, and it's published by Abrams Young Readers. Um, this is the fourth book in the Questionnaire series. You might have read um, Iggy Peck, um, Rosie Revere, I can't say. Um, Ada Twist Scientist, um, some great questioning kids in grade two. Um, I did read this book out loud to, I think, the third graders, maybe some second graders. Um, so, um, I hope everyone enjoys it. So, Sofia Valdez, Future Prez. come to the side here. Sophia was a baby who got things done, helping her family before she turned one. She and Abuelo went out every week to help elderly friends around Blue River Creek who couldn't get out and about on their own and with no place to gather were stuck home alone. So her and her abuelo, her grandpa, went and helped lots of the neighborhood residents. Raking the leaves, taking pets for walks, or just dropping by for a treat and a talk. Sofia Valdez did as much as she could for her family and friends and her whole neighborhood. A dreamer, a doer, a real life go-getter. Most people like good, but Sofia liked better. Each morning, Abuelo walked Sophie to class. They walked home again along Blue River Pass, making plans, munching cookies, Abuela and girl. Except for that Tuesday when Pop saw the squirrel with the howl, Pop took off racing all through the town, over, under, and below beneath and around. Sophia scrambled to try and keep up with the hollering man and the bellowing pup. Fun picture. They're going all over. Up the squirrel ran to the top of a hill made of leftover junk from the local landfill. They reached the tip top of that mountain of trash which jiggled and broke with an ear splitting crash. Down they all tumbled and hit with a thud on a moldy old pumpkin surrounded by mud. Ouch! cried Abuelo. He struggled to stand. A dangerous mess, he said, grasping her hand. The next day, Sophia walked to school solo, but it wasn't the same without her abuelo. This is not right, declared young Sophia, who glared at Mount Trashmore and got an idea. The very next morning, at half past dawn, she planted a sign at the front of the lawn. She stood back and smiled, and Pup gave a bark. Get rid of Mount Trashmore. Let's build a new park.
Each of her neighbors had something to say about benches and fountains and places to play, meeting spots, gardens, a basket for bees, a rubber duck pond, and a kiosk for cheese. She drew every thought on her map of the park, which was perfectly perfect by a quarter till dark. She drifted to sleep in her soft, cozy bed. Then bam, she woke up with a th when a thought smacked her head. Her heart skipped a beat as she realized each one of her neighbors had said, let me know when it's done. They all thought Sophia could build it alone, but how could one girl do so much on her own? The weight of that thought made her tender heart ache as night thunder growled and she lay wide awake. Then dawn brought a storm and the gloomy sky wept and the hearts of Sophia finally slept. Abuelo baked cookies when Sophie got up. He gave her a bagful and sneaked one for pup. He blinked back a tear as he hugged Sophia. For courage, he whispered, te amo mi vida. Sophia's knees wobbled. She felt weak inside. She looked at his ankle and quite nearly cried. Though she didn't feel brave or courageous at all, Sophia Valdez went to face City Hall. So here's City Hall where the government works, the city government works right next to the library. There she goes. The mayor's office sent her to room 401, the Blue River Creek Department of Fun, which sent her downstairs to room 302, the office of duck ponds and cool things to do, the office of monkeys, the Department of Cheese, the Division of Fountains, and Meetings and Bees, then down to the basement so musty and cramped where all the town's papers were sorted and stamped. And that's where the clerk said what no one else did. You can't build a new park. You're only a kid. Uh-oh. The words smacked Sophia deep down in her heart. Her plan was kiboshed before it could start. I think, said Sophia, I think that law's wrong. But her second grade voice didn't sound very strong. The clerk said, clearly it can't be done. Do you have any questions? Sophia said, one? If you were me, and if I were you, and if he was your grandpa, what would you do? I will, said the clerk. And then she said nothing at all. She thought and she thought, and then she sent out a call to every employee throughout City Hall. There they all are including the mayor. The entire government of Blue River Creek crammed into the office to hear Sophie speak, but her words jumbled up and her cheeks turned bright red as a dozen emotions rushed into her head. Her heart beat so loudly she thought it would crack. The crowd leaned in closer. Sophia leaned back. Then her arm brushed the edge of the old cookie sack. And that was the moment when Sophia first knew being brave means doing the thing you must do. Though your heart cracks with fear and though you're just in grade two. Ah, here's her plan and ideas. She took a deep breath, looked the mayor in the eye, and though her knees wobbled, she held her head high. 
Sophia started talking. She spelled out her plan and why it all mattered and how it began. And once she got rolling, she had lots to say about meeting spots, monkeys, and places to play and other ideas for things they could do to help the town elders and other folks too. She had thoughts on the library, thoughts on the zoo, and perhaps a way to combine the two. And, all right, cried the mayor. Go start a petition. If the town wants a new park, we'll form a commission. And so young Sophia got right to work with some help from her family and pup and the clerk. They all have signs. Let's build a park, a park for everyone. Sign our petition, please. Bark for parks. <laughs> And here are all her classmates. Then others joined in, not all, but a few, like Miss Lila Greer and the kids in grade two. So here's her teacher, Miss Lila Greer. Um, and some of the other kids from the other books are in here. There's Iggy Peck and Rosie Revere and Ada Twist. And they all have signs that say things like, scientists need parks. Sign our petition, please. We love parks. A park to think in. We can do it. Get rid of Mount Trashmore. Somewhere that's green. We need more green. Si se puede. Sign our petition, please. All different signs. There are hearings and surveys and taxes to figure then bulldovers, cranes, and a blue bigger digger. They all built that park. That's how it got done, with the hard work of, by, and for everyone. But it began with the dream of one person, just one, who laced up her shoes and then led the way to help Blue River Creek get a new place to play. Now every evening till long after dark, the town comes together at Citizens Park they all hold this truth to be self-evident that Sofia Valdez could grow up to be president. Until then, Sofia, that real life go-getter, helps Blue River Creek get better and better. And that is the end of their Citizens Park. So I hope you enjoyed Sofia Valdez's future press. Maybe motivate you to um, have an idea and stand up for what you believe in to make our world a better place. Um, yeah, okay. I hope everyone has a wonderful day. I will see you all later. Bye.